we'll use crypto trading in the technical indicators uh yeah to, to just keep um the front end updated and yeah great just, um, thanks a task for this build a pipeline around that thanks Wangui. i think that's i i like that you connect the, it's a relationship with the, with the past week and that's really exactly the case when i say it's a continuation in some way the technologies that you use are more or less the same um and you are applying it now in a completely different settings um but yeah so great you see like that's the type of refreshment and angle that i'm looking for okay one more one more person get it okay uh and good morning guidance so it's very well but from my understanding there is one cases which is meta is this taken as a case study for uh which is one of the financial uh, institute which is working on finance and uh, by taking that we try to do uh back testing by those uh, uh, tools and technologies which is last which was tried last uh, week and uh, uh, it has kind of some continuation back but uh, to explain uh, much i didn't very well know how to work this thing is very well that is my understanding thank you again another perspective uh, you know one i wanted to to say in any project you are going to encounter if you don't know the vocabulary, you're not going to make progress. And understanding and articulating exactly from just starting the title, if you don't know backtesting, if you don't say, like, OK, I, you know, like that, it would be basically you are, again, for me, passive. In a way, that, that's a whole point, again, another. another it's really to be able to articulate your, you know, your kind of reflecting. And then by that statement, you start actually getting some, some help. So you move every day is, you know, like you have only one week, which means every day is really, really valuable. Um, so great. Thanks again, Ganon, for that. So that's correct. If we piece it together, it's this continuation from last week. A lot more understanding on crypto that um, you require to know. Just last, last week, you needed to know how to process you know uh, audio files and you needed to know to measure quality you needed to also sometimes you know you didn't you didn't have to implement it but if you are hard to also just ensure that the voice that's recorded is a, a certain quality you needed actually to connect with another you know uh, training an ai uh, way that would tell you at least that someone recorded an amharic right you show them an amharic later they record something similar Right? Otherwise, it's just unlikely. Right? Even if at, it's at a smaller, low resolution level or low uh, accuracy, it should at least be, it should have something got to do with the reality. So you, you could have connected to check for the quality. You needed to understand some form of um, you know, model. So it's the same as there now, the things that you have to understand is crypto trading or in, in general, stock market trading. And in the stock market trading, the very common thing is that because you don't know what's happening, the factors that are affecting, you know, the factors that are affecting a voice is a lot of things. The quality of the mic, you know, the surrounding noise, the person's tonation, you know, and all that. The factors that are affecting a crypto or a trading is, of course, everything from news to anything. So in general, there's no easy way. Um, to know, you know, what is going to happen. That means, will the price of a certain stock go up or down? You know, and that's what you need to know. And that form of anything in in whatever you have done, even in week one, week two, Rosman, when you have to do the time series and go back and and see if your model was performing good in the past, that's called backtesting. It's basically anything back testing means like testing in the historical data, right? So, or evaluating your strategy or a strategy, in this case is a model or any form 
or any, you know, that strategy could be indicator. You know, if it's one dimensional, all you need to do sometimes is, is, is was it up or down at a certain time? So that's what's called, you know, kind of, in this case, a one dimensional, you want to know. And of course, how up, how down is another element. But at least you need to know, you know, what, is it going up or down? That's called indicators, like, or signal. You know, signal is up or down. And that's what you want to you know. Back testing means really testing on your strategy, any type of strategy. You know, it, it doesn't have to be um, crypto. It doesn't have to be stock. Anything, Rosman sales prediction or you know weather prediction. Everything is called back testing. Um, but mostly, back testing is used in the financial sense as a terminology. But back testing, you can hear it everywhere, including machine learning elements. You know, that, that that learns from a historical data is called back testing. So your part is that while back testing, back testing is another very, you know, very profound as you can imagine. So many people got rich. Um, you know, if I ask you anyone, who do you know who is so rich and famous based on trading? Anyone? A name that that stands out to you that you know. Uh, this guy named the uh, moon i don't really know his real name but he's a very young guy and he has this nickname called the moon and he usually okay. do, does crypto trading and he's really rich okay yeah i don't know that one but warren buffett is the standard like uh, exactly warren buffett is very very famous trader and all his basically things are comes from trading um so yeah true there are many but warren buffett is considered one of the biggest yeah Sam? was uh, the question a uh, general trading i thought it was about crypto trading no i, I mean i meant more trading but in, in crypto there are probably I, I don't know anyone i mean i don't know names but i there are many of course i mean the one that you say oh, okay. I just, I just thought the question was about uh, crypto trading, yes. Sure, I think you're right. I mean, it's just that, as I said, like Warren Buffett is famous, um, at least from the trading element, um, but he doesn't do absolutely crypto. So what I'm, yeah. what I'm saying is that like all of them, they use backtesting. Just that's the fundamental tool in any trading elements because you don't know what is affecting it. And then some people, famous people, of course, influence also not only the backtesting, they don't use backtesting, but they use their fame to influence actually the actual, you know, Elon Musk, for example, would say something and then some of the crypto would go up, you know, people. So you can look at the information that influence, everything is different. So, but then given that there are so many things that are influencing, um, you know, stock markets or crypto, you know the best way is you you back test as often as possible because hopefully it captures the back test doesn't care what influenced what but you it's like so many random things influence it and therefore by learning you will learn from the historical data that's what it means as everyone says mala is your clan this week and it wants to provide the public especially the the public in and the you know in who are interested to trade um in crypto they it wants to provide a very decent like very robust highly available backtesting framework right so basically in crypto and that means you have to be not to run every backtest user requests if someone already requests some backtest with a certain parameter you should be able to fetch it from there. And if it's new, then you have to basically run it again and then kind of store it. Because back tests might cost, might, you know, running them might be very, very expensive over time. So, and also not only that, it, it takes time. So whenever it takes time, you know, you, you, you're not gonna be instant. So you have to be able to schedule also some people want back testing results. If they subscribe, for example, if, if Mela has a subscription, Fee that you basically for a given strategy you are backtesting every time and and send them by email for example every morning in the possible signal uh, given the data that, that was increased from yesterday to today you know what happens 
Uh, what is how is your strategy saying? Is it up or is it going to say up or is it going to down or update the model, right? So there are many of like when you are thinking of yourself as a startup and providing these services, there are multiple needs that people have, and the efficiency as well as also you know robustness is important, right? So so you need to learn a little bit of what backtesting is and how it works because even if you are building infrastructure and providing but you are working as a team and you're going to be a lot more um you know you're going to be thinking about really creating a system that 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 handles again lots of you know different requests processes differently and if it takes time it has to schedule it and it has to uh, inform when the results are finished um and and so to to basically speed up also you have to basically store the metadata of everything so that you can search it if it is already available or if somebody has already uh, so you want to run as few uh, runs as possible um basically by by using caching and on all that okay so everything is the same uh here but the one part you can now influence is that are you happy with your team and we definitely will change the lead so group one who wants to be your lead or who wants to be the, the, the change so emit do you want to take the lead um I, no i don't think i'm suitable for taking the lead really that's the most important part whoever doesn't want will be a lead that's great <laughs> oh my god okay Okay, who is the next lead? Uh, Fisa, maybe that you were not, or Akubazagi, um, or Bran. So, yeah, just, just, just to use your. Uh, your okay, who doesn't want I, 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 I really, I really want. <laughs> want to be so maybe i'm not going to be uh, yeah okay oh, i was also a leader so it's better for Saura. okay let's make it just for Saura because uh yeah actually he it's, said he, uh, he didn't actually Brahalu said he didn't want so maybe he can no that's exactly the, the point so let's just play the psychology you said if you really want it that means he didn't want it so um <laughs> or you know i'm just more playing okay but you are happy yeah. with your team and the capacity of your team is okay. That means you guys can handle um, and it, the chemistry worked, right? Yeah, I, I, I personally couldn't complain. Great. Uh, okay. Others can also speak for themselves. So in, in a way, what I want is that if, if you recognize in your group there is a skill gap or anything, you, you can just say it and then we can try to shuffle. Right. The most important part is that sometimes it's a group work. You learn it. I think you guys are really great at working together, every team. But if there is a skill gap, for example, in back end or front end or you know tools, let me know so that I can shuffle a bit. Um, so, group two, do you think the skill gap, uh, the skill is okay? Everybody was good. So why don't we make now Gedeon or ba Bakalu or Henok? Um, so I'm just going to okay, make it the third one, unless there's objection. And then I'm going to make Adiat in the next one. Okay, is that correct? Everything, anyone from group two who has special request or anything? I don't see you, so you can unmute and say. Uh, uh, yes. Can maybe, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, someone else can be the lead. I'm from group two. Yeah. Um, is that because you don't have time, or is that what is? Uh, I, I, maybe like someone with better organizational skills. 
Um, I think they will help you, right? But then it's a good time to learn. I mean, at least to. I mean, I think you know now. You guys work together. I don't think it's going to be difficult this week. Adiat, did you have also? Oh. Uh, no, I have no objection. Okay, great. So uh, I think you can do it, Gideon. Uh, you know, just continue from last week. Whatever works from last week, continue. Whatever doesn't work, try to improve it. You know, it's, it's like all of the people work hard, so I don't think there is any issue. Uh, Emitna? Yes, I want to ask, uh, is, would the lead uh, this time come with the uh, super user privileges again? Yes, I, I think, you know, you can delegate if you want to, but yeah, in a way, okay. you know, the lead. So, for example, if you want someone else like to, to be the pseudo access because that person is more helpful in that area, you can just delegate that. So the, the lead basically supervises that, you know understand the skill categories you know different people and can decide communicate like okay let this person have also uh, additionally root access you know so you basically understand your team's uh, collection skill collection and uh, different other elements and then you work together to, to to provide the best for the team right so that you guys just achieve uh, the best of what you can you don't have to be like the you know the guru or whatever it's not it's not about that it's about organizing and communicating the needs um, and and kind of you know ensuring that people are talking working you know and whenever there is a communication you just communicate it there is no other okay. special requirement yeah so it's, it's, it's del yeah can delegate great okay uh, Sam? Yeah, can I pose a question real quick that is kind of related to just yeah. the question you previously asked? Okay, so yeah. uh, moments earlier, you just said if there is a skill gap and anything you noticed, you can shuffle. Uh, I'm not saying there's any type of skill gap or any uh, misunderstanding or something that I'm not comfortable with my group, but I'm just I just wanted to know, like, how is it possible to make the compromise of not offending others uh, while saying, imagine this is a working environment, right? So we are in, um, in a real standard job and imagine our boss or our CEO or what, whatever the team did exactly asked the question you just really asked. Ralph. So how is it possible for some of the group uh, members to actually compromise between not offending the other pe person, but actually delivering the context of where there is a skill gap, where there is some kind of communication mismatch. You know, I, I'm just asking this question because I imagine yeah. myself in a working environment and I wanted to know how to respond to this kind of questions in the working environment. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this group, okay. No, I, I understand. I mean, you know, I think it's it's very good that you are very sensitive about it that already shows that your team knows that. You know, the way you say it is good. But another one is really to not even go in that side is that you know what you struggled last week. For example, the type of skill sets that you didn't do it because not someone, two or three people were so familiar with backend, but not you know, only one person with front end. And you may now not see it as like, oh, that person, that person, but you say like, our team would benefit, of course, if there are, you know, more front-end experience people. You basically are articulating the problem that you have observed. It's not about suggesting anything, but it's, you know, everybody recognizes that. So, and then you just say, or another one is that our team would benefit more with people, because our team maybe is the back, you know, kind of don't have that much background on toolings or for example linux elements environment i think by articulating exactly the problem instead of the people you can easily avoid being you know kind of pointing 
Does that, that make sense? That, that really makes sense. So it's like reframing the whole uh, problem or the whole uh, difficulty in terms of the problem and not the person individually. So it's like, yeah, okay. So, so this is I'm a always, thing we observe. I'm yeah. always so just this like, is don't be afraid. As long as you are observing and articulating that problem, that to the you know to the best of your knowledge you assessed i think you shouldn't after that you shouldn't too much overthink it i think everybody would be happy ultimately of course to you know we understand you understand ultimately we all want to learn from each other and achieve success or like the best yeah. thing yeah. and then usually exactly. it is not about the person it's about the the actual things that that went on and you know, it, because we know every all of us are strong here and there, and it, it may be just that for the task that at hand, you require X, Y, Z skills, and Y is missing or Y is less represented, underrepresented. So that's that's how I would reframe. That's, that's uh, every, really uh, nice. Great. Yeah, I sure. think I uh, yeah I, I didn't completely understand this point of uh, shuffling around. So is it something that uh, individuals can say like, yes, we have, uh, I don't think I fit in this group or is it like more of uh, like uh, a, a group decision? Like, yeah, we think that our group is not, um, we cannot handle all the tasks that are um, required in this, yeah. in this challenge and we have to, we need uh, like a, a different members maybe. I, I don't understand yeah. completely. So it's not so, about the okay. skills so it, like the skills gap between the members of the group like maybe it's in groups exactly. some people are more are more maybe advanced uh compared to others so it's, it's not about the skill gap in within the group itself i i just don't completely so, get uh, it. let me be honest in this in this sense you could really just take the group approach which is like okay let's discuss are we you know, it's the hardest thing that I'm going to say, but it's the once you start practicing it, it just basically becomes easier. Is that the first thing is that did it work? The group, like your first, so take the rule approach. Did it work? Did the chemistry work? Okay. That means it's not about, you know, so that means did you guys produce, did you meet regularly with a lot of people were there? And if not, if the answer is yes, then then your second question. So let's take the, the yes part. The chemistry works everybody's you know really helping each other nothing nothing blocking in that sense and then the second part is that you evaluate what are the type of tasks that are there too and then you also know from at least last week you know what what are the strengths of the week uh, the, the group you know where they're under or re, uh, over representation on a certain task or on a certain skill if there are over representation for example so many people know front end it might you know you don't know which one to assume like you know whom to give even so sometimes you might say like okay we have over representation of this so if any group really wants to exchange for that we, we like you could actually approach it that way as a positive as well saying like we really have that that skill a lot over represented and then if so that is if that's the yes part like that means the games to work the chemistry okay. doesn't work again you would not point to anyone or oh, the chemistry doesn't work but you just say like i think honestly last week there was some kind of blockage we don't know exactly where the issue is but it doesn't work as much as we want or we haven't done as much as we could and then in that sense we just say okay great let's shuffle so i think um, always okay. always yeah. you try to basically just be the you know as far away from like pointing to individuals but more to the actual problem in this case the actual problem was that the chemistry doesn't work and everybody knows that usually if it doesn't work everybody knows that it doesn't work it didn't work i mean um, it's not because you don't each other but it's just like it didn't work for some reason it didn't work if okay you can't, so you can't, you want? Yeah. yeah yes i just wanted to like Maybe I can use a clearer example. And in this case, I can speak uh, because I think I'm the weaker link in my group. I was, um, uh, so in that sense, um, maybe some people, I, meaning myself in this case, uh, that couldn't participate as much um, compared to the other members. 
in that case um uh yeah it might be the group will will uh will benefit of shuffling me out uh, but of course the group that will, re uh, will receive me will not benefit so it's it's a it's a strange uh, no, no, but i think i think it's uh, you know don't see it this way i think the, the, you are seeing it from like work is not about just only delivery i think the whole point is that as a group don't see it as an individual as a group did you guys do it whether you participated as much as you wanted you don't but as a group you worked well okay now this time you know you learned so this time the group will benefit from you probably much more better than you know before so it's almost always you have to tolerate there's always somebody weak almost always there's, you can't have everybody equal the whole point is if if for example for some reason if your group didn't work like it's not about you you kind of being strong weak or somebody strong weak but it's like that's probably now a good opportunity now you're leaving that one even if you were unable last time to participate as much as others now this time you would just take that that burden great so it's not a i think i i wouldn't see it from the perspective of weak or strong as long as there's eagerness chemistry and skill i think then it should be fine and the whole point yeah, is I, to yeah, be I think, better i think every yeah, i time. get a, i get the point yes i think okay great mohammed yes um <laughs> um my question is um do you prefer uh, that we switch uh, the task that we worked on the previous week so that we will gain um uh, a diversified knowledge in the other tasks or we should work on the same tasks that we worked last week no, um i think it's again absolutely trade-off it's a trade-off i would recommend you shuffle the tasks between people but then you kind of assign the other person who has done that last week to supervise or help the other person so you, you kind of uh, assign tasks to people at a time one kind of being a monitoring role and the other one is the actual doing role but that the monitoring role ensures that you know that that person you know they work together so that you compromise between the two you know but i really absolutely think it's shuffling is good so that you all get different skill sets okay i get awesome so I think, you know, these are excellent questions. I really love discussing these questions. The, the, the whole reason is exactly this is work, you know, and, and it's about being honest uh, about things while at the same time being sensitive. I, I, I admire the sensitivity you guys have, but at the same time also the honesty or the, at least the, the trial on that, right? So that's great. So awesome. I think this is working. Uh, group three. Um, was there any skill gap that you have identified? Was was everything working? You know, did it work? Yes, group three. That is my group. Okay, so um, let me speak because I'm the weakest point here, also in this group. Um, we have uh, Ella Michael and yes, Jenny Rose, Mongui, and Nahum uh did a really good job especially uh the michael and uh, generals wrote a clean code and uh and uh, me and patrick uh, we were working on the front end and uh this the gap uh i think uh was on the front end uh this 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 was my task uh, I have no prior experience with uh, React, but um, I I tried it and succeeded in implementing some of uh, some of uh, the task, the subtask. But overall, I think the the gap was from my side. The gap was from uh, in the in the front end side, and uh, I suggest that Hello Michael or uh, Nahum could uh, show us uh, 
a different perspective from the week, mm -hmm. the last week. Yeah, I'm Mike. Uh, I love you, Kale, and now. I mean, I, by the way, I loved your front end, so it was good. Okay, thank you. So was the chemistry okay? Let's just go to the rule part. Did you guys, yeah. I mean, I, it, se it seemed you, you guys produced a very good job. Like for me, like that was that was good. Like the, the demo went well, the, the kind of the design of the front end was really good. Um, so I didn't see any issue there, but was there a, a concentration of task on few people and then whatever, or did the chemistry work? Or was there, you know, what, what, what is, so if you now continue, would you become even better and work, you know, kind of harmoniously? Yes, uh, I think that uh, in the communication part uh, in the previous week, we did very well because uh, we met in a regular basis and we discussed every uh, blockers that we faced on the same day. Uh, some some days we have two meetings, one in the morning and one in the evening. And some um, and du during the day also we do communicate well in uh, in the Slack group. <clears throat> so uh, basically, uh, the leading uh, people of our group did a really good job, and uh, they they eased the communication and they helped uh, they helped us in 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 tackling any blockers. And um, I think the, the 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 first factor of succeeding uh, on on delivering our task was the communication part because we really did uh, good communication. Great, awesome, and um, thank you, Yana uh, Rosa. Um, hi. Uh, well, okay. There's not much to add from what Mohammed has said. But yeah, the team is the teamwork is good. We we are very good collaborators. Great. So I I mean I assigned now Wangui and then Mohammed, but again, you know it's you guys can handle all you know all the internal divisions. So another one that I want to say is that because when I see. This, so the most important part is that you were not underrepresented by a certain skill that you have identified. As long as that's the case, I think that means the group, you know, it, it's fine. And then if there, so the two most important parts I would say is that the chemistry, which means basically that people can meet and talk and help each other. You know, th there is some form of groupness that you want to do it all uh, together. And then another part is that there was no missing skill, at least. One person at least must have one of the required skills. Okay? And I assume in all of the three groups so far, that's the case. Group four. Is that the case? I didn't see a demo also uh, for that one. And did it work, your front end? Did you, did you have, you know, enough skill sets? Yeah, Emmanuel? Uh, hi. So, uh, yes, uh, we had uh, enough skill sets. Uh, but I think uh, it is uh, the... Uh, back in the database handling and uh, the api constructions that we need some additional skills on okay. and uh, i believe uh, leading is about organizing things uh, and making it uh, smooth the flow uh, and uh, that is, that could be well worked by women that is what we have witnessed from the uh, we have been lead, uh, TVC have been leading, so we need one uh, woman lead too in this week. Maybe Ghana. 
Okay. Great. And yes, we have a demonstration. Uh, we yes. just uh, managed so, to. So, the day, I mean, that, that's the part. Right now, you need someone. So, who is more familiar? Let's just talk from batch one, a uh, group one as well. Who is familiar with um, database, you know, working with databases in group one? Is there someone who's, who has already worked on that one? On databases before or have some training in the past? I imagine there are at least a few right there. I mean, yes, to some level, I am uh, uh, familiar with them, but I would not say I am, uh, that's my strong suit. I would not say that's my strong suit. Okay. So, but at least what I'm saying is that, like, from you, the group, so I can see, like, the, the, the things that you require that in the machine learning area, you need, you know, especially if you have also people who have done who have understood a little bit of uh, so there's the database component there is the of course the kafka which i assume that you all now are familiar and and then the front end back end and basically design uh, of the whole ar infrastructure architecture basically making it smoother and and connecting and dividing so, okay, let's just, because it's not easy to really right now discuss it. Let's just say, if like in this group, uh, who is more familiar with? So what was the miss, like a gap that you identified, you said, uh, I think was that Emmanuel? Database? Yes. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to this one and then we can back, come back, maybe. Um, okay, group five. Um, so for group five, I feel like um, the chemistry was good. Um, we had a guy for front end who was Alexander, and back end, um, the Gaga was more um, suitable. Uh, and then for the databases and APIs, that is where we had um, a lot of problems. Um, for, for which one? For which one? Sorry. Database and. Uh, and APIs. Okay. Yeah. So great. And um, then I'm just thinking from group three, who who had who's more so how many database people are there in database? Uh, I think that, uh, so let's, oh, no. let's identify, self-identify people who have been, who are, who have at least experience working in databases, like in different type of databases, Not just me. group one, well, who's there? Just identify yourself. It's not like, think but. You know, it's not like oh, I'm expert. You're not. You know, don't think of it this way. Just I have I have had some experience and worked on it before. So, Nathan, Mr. Shah, are you okay with that? Are you comfortable in database design, especially schema, blah blah? If we can make it faster. Yes or no? I, I would I would I would really appreciate that so that we don't kill time. Okay, Nathaniel is not there, maybe. Brahan? Yes, I, I have no background within that, but uh, uh, some theoretical. Okay, have you worked on maybe it? Not, uh, maybe uh, not. Maybe not. It's 
Okay, I think it's you to all us. Okay, man. So, but, so you have a theoretical understanding, you have taken a course on databases? And yes, yes. Have you worked on it in any form? In project in the university, I did, but in the real practice, I have not. Okay. And Fisa, you said you have some? I think uh, Netnail have uh, replied in the chat box. Ah, okay. Okay, great. Um, and Fisaha, you said you have also some experience. Uh, yeah. Ziki. <clears throat> yes, uh, just uh, the basic. I do have basic understanding. So you would be comfortable to take it, for example, as a role and to be able to help design I don't know, schemas, whatever, uh, and, and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have to read. Uh, just uh, we don't have ah. No, I mean, it, it absolutely. Everybody, even an expert, needs to read. But I mean that you are comfortable. You're not going to be like intimidated. Yeah, it has no any problem. I can handle it. Okay. Just I can read it. I can. Uh, okay. Go with it. So, so then I can shuffle in this case because you have you guys have um, at least so two of you. I can shuffle. So. Do you mind if I shuffle you to group four? No, oh, I mean uh, we were we were working together with group one. And I was uh, preferred to stay there because no, you sure. know, uh, in fine. the last week, yeah, we were working okay. on different level, and uh, and this week when we shuffled activities and when we assign each of us as. Uh, co-advisor or uh, evaluator it would be very nice for us okay okay great um uh, Emmanuel? yeah uh, i believe uh, we had uh, built that chemistry and uh, i think we want to stay in our uh, okay. group great. and uh, I, you can read it and I it's fine I, 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 so now you know that's great right so if you need some help you can always reach out to other groups sure and it's, it's really about that great okay yeah, everybody is there to help uh, so of course yeah you can also I, I i want the spirit this is spirit so that's that's good uh, okay and didn't it yeah it's just to comment on what you've just said i mean if you have uh, some problem like you have you, you have to like ask another group. Uh, yeah. I've noticed that the week seven channel was like very uh, not active, not as active actually. Uh, our group channel is, uh, personally our group channel has like more chats than the main channel. So maybe uh, it's better to uh, uh, participate there. So like, if you have any questions and if you uh, think anything that would help other groups uh, in like uh, you can like share anything so like uh, let's do that as just uh so wh why don't we why don't we pair also groups that have to communicate and they have to learn about what other groups are working so i would say group one and group five um like I'm gonna shuffle, I mean, not shuffle, but you have to, your sister, brother uh, groups, okay? So this one is basically, you have to learn if I ask you what they are doing, you should be able to tell me, okay? Okay, okay, is it like a foreign minister of uh, exactly. group? Yeah, exactly. yeah. just so reach and out like, to them to learn about them you know if nothing at least hold one or two sessions in a week like so within the whole week at least you must have at least two sessions uh, or one session at least um, so but it's exactly the same like of course like for group five one i think you're also group four yeah. ah group four okay so that's
No, in in the group one, like you have to. Yes, then I do this, and then I will change oh. that one. Okay. okay. And then. And then there is going to be, of course, one group that is remaining. Uh, I think let's just make it group four. Yeah, it's uh, quite a bit. Odd numbers are not. Uh, so let's call it one session. Yeah, does that make sense? So that means group four will have at least one session with group one and then one session with group um, and then, uh, yeah, I think let's just do that. So group one and group three, you have at least one session with group four, but then, yeah, it, it's not gonna be, you know, I'm not trying to make it all of this, I will just make it one. It's once you know each other, so everybody at least have one session with another session, and group four will have two sessions, at least one with group one and one with group three. Okay. Um, this way, we, let's, let's practice, you know, it's much more of um, experimental, right? In a way that you at least have to learn in one session what they're doing, you know, you, you can introduce them during next week monday i would ask one group a sister group to introduce the other group so that what they have done before they present right kind of it's experimental so you know fill the gap does that make sense yes it does that's a great idea awesome. okay okay and so now that that is the done it's a lot of work this week, you have to know. But it's also a very exciting one because you would be learning a lot more. But, and the good thing about it, of course, the team continues, the machine continues, the, the technology continues, right? So you're basically, now we don't struggle with those things, hopefully. And there are ad added elements in a way that you would be designing a schema how to store so you really have to think in terms of like okay you know what information am i storing how should i design my you know my tables you read a little bit of about data, data you know kind of the data models you know what what forms one form two form i'm gonna also link actually on those elements um to read i think i've already encountered those ones that's called you know uh, data vault or kimball model um so in this one So I will reference these ones, and and then So there are some forms um, in database normalizers. These are basically standards of a table, how you design a table, 
And sometimes if you apply a one form, uh, normal form criteria, it, it, it helps you to split your table in, in a certain way. When you apply the second label like that, so you will just read a little bit. It's on that side. And then you, of course, integrate ML ops, and then you build back end and front end. We will introduce uh, Lambda, which is serverless here, just so that you can host your actually um, your front end. And we will have one tutorial on on that by a former, um, by I think it's batch four trainee. And then, of course, pipeline and blog. You know that that those are um, part. So. The tasks, there are, there are going to be small edits in as we go on, but mostly to make it much more clearer, but as it is, is, is very clear. The very first part is just get to you, get used to it. Learn how to backtest, especially financial backtest. There are a, uh, Python ones that are really just these ones, backtrader, vector bot, uh, vector um, BT. So that's just BTs usually for backtest. And I think you know any of them if you use it's fine this one is much more simpler this one is much more really used in the industry a lot like it's quite um you know quite uh, used and and then frequency trade also is is used but you can choose one of them um but i would say if you just wanna don't wanna choose just if you wanna don't wanna choose and just you want a simpler part maybe use vector opt the vector bt but if you can use Backtrader, you can get more support from us. Because Azaria, one of the tutor, has been working on Backtrader quite a lot. I mean, he has tried all of them, but I think he, more implementations we have and can help in Backtrader a lot. Um, so if you don't want to choose, just use Backtrader, OK? And then run a few, basically, backtests. So that's basically the, the, the very first one. And, and in backtest, you start. Like this afternoon, you will have the conceptual uh, components, and then tomorrow morning there will be a practical kind of um, live coding tutorial. But this just a lot more of it depends, you know, some terminologies you have to know. What it really a lot more you will struggle at first, and then you know the next two days will be a lot of terminology: signal, you know, this candle, you know, open, uh, closing, whatever, you know, a can like all of that is kind of like how stock markets, the data, because you know, the data is basically, you know, order books and stuff like that. These are just, if you got, if you come from that environment, from business environment, you really probably have an advantage so you can educate your team, but a lot more just get used to it. Today, read as much, you know, kind of practice, do, do the damage today if you can, okay? That's the most important part. Just do the damage today because there's so much, um, uh, terminologies, signals, and all that, you know, elements. And then you basically, you know, learn a little bit of some of them and you implement. So that's task one. A lot more getting, making you familiarize with just what backtest, how to do backtest, and, you know, what elements are needed for backtest. Uh, before you try to put them together into something, you, you are basically, uh, you know, just this uh, task one is really to help you without any jargon or any development, whatever, it helps you understand what, what elements are there. And then in, in task two is basically just what you would be start building to make it systematic, to make it a lot more, you know, okay, now I, you know I'm running this and that, and so if I'm running backtest again, can I pull from the database? So can I modify my code, my backtest score, such that in one part it can call and check from SQL, in the other one like that. So we will give you a small starting design that you can iterate as well. So maybe Azaria and I can add one just proposed uh, setup, just based on our own previous, but you are entitled to really change and, and create it, you know, modify it. Um, but this one would be nicer to establish just your backtest to be really done on one scene. And then what a scene is basically just a parameter file that describes your backtest parameters, right? And so this part is a lot more creating that, like being able to serve, um, um, you know, based on whatever backtest you, you have now understood and designed to be able to optimize it uh, such that you can pull from a, a cache from a database 
um, when it's are not available and stuff. So it's modifying your code to do that. And and there also just you, you will help also just to start creating a you know it's a distributed manner, right? So one part is one person is working on like okay now it's a client coming, you know how do I know how do I show them like their previous history what they have run blah blah. So there is another table. One table is for the practice, whatever. Another table is for the users logging uh, their previous test runs, blah, blah. You know, that you may, if you have a table in the database, you can pull from that database and show that. So basically, you build some form of, you know, authenticating system uh, that does that, that handles that. Um, and that basically, you have been practicing it in Web3 context as well as also last time. I mean, uh, not last time, but at least you are, the web 3 one you have done something like that some of you and then the other part is of course when you are running it's nicer to be able to really also push some artifacts so that you can pull them back as needed uh, using kind of ml ops tools again this one i would say is you know that you know a lot more what you have done but use kafka to synchronize all of that pieces and you now know the advantage of Kafka. Kafka is really just basically brings your system ability. For example, if there are so much demand from the user side, but the backend is not that much, you know, you'd be able to store it and, and kind of send back a message saying until, you know, how many queues are there in front. So you can tell them how long they probably should wait this or that. So basically everybody, everything in your system should use Kafka to communicate because Kafka can handle a lot of stress instead of them directly, all of the system directly connecting means, you know, a load will break it. But with Kafka, you're, you're able to really basically buffer it um, so that a load will not break it. So, you know, you do that and you store also um, kind of artifacts in, in ML flow or another system. So again, here, again, assign one person only, but don't kill yourself just there that's less i mean the kafka part and the synchronization is important but for example the same mail whatever it's it's kind of good it's the, the most important part if you are bringing it as an industry but i would say if if you are if it's taking you time don't really um break your back there i mean i would say assign one person small resource but the most important part is not that the most important part is that setting up that kafka and talking and ultimately the database, the back tests, how you run it, um, and then how users get what they request is the most important part. So this one, if you have to delegate for the future, you can delegate that. I am not discouraging you not to do it, but I'm just saying, it's like, I don't don't put too much time. If you have to focus where, you know, task two is very important, task one is very important. Task three is very important, part of it like the automate backtest using Airflow, as well as Kafka to, to synchronize is within task three, the most important parts. And then of course, this one we already said, um, logged users can uh, specify scenes and, and basically get back backtest results. And then we will modify slightly this one. I think there is um, how to index, create index fund, but you basically, I mean, this is the, what is specified but you probably get more help from there. So using the, you know, the modern portfolio theory, you would try to create a funding. And usually that means plotting the different assets. So whenever index fund means, for example, let's imagine, you know, right now in backtest, you might be testing about one crypto, for example, Bitcoin or Ethereum or this or that. But then sometimes for trading purposes, you wanna bundle multiple of them and you create an index in such a way that anyone invests in that index and then you are basically trading based on that index and that in that, that basically index which basically contains multiple coins is being reshuffled continuously the index is constant but the, that part is uh, continuously changing such that you maximize profit right and how you select which coins to put in an index of course matters whether the index is successful or not okay so that's why index funding is, is basically it's a lot more when it, if it works it's amazing because you balance risk and you balance reward so hopefully you will get more more stable results and instead of just trading only on one 
and you are given now now you understand you also can attempt uh, to try to create fund at least in index fund but at least study that and propose you know how many of you know what are your approach for that that will be task five again we would explain on that a bit more and the conceptual sets as well and of course just task six is just block reporting you know blogging really this is going to change a lot more of so many things involve around different elements of backtesting. So this will both from the data engineering and machine learning engineering side, you can showcase this. So please, everyone in the group, be active, help your team. Either if nothing by nothing, just read the references, read more concept, you know, be the source of information for your team. Um, create, write as much code as you can, you know, think, just don't be on the sideline. There's so much work. And definitely, I can tell you, it's not going to be done by a few people. So there's a lot more in every all of elements. There's a lot more. So just basically do that. In the tutorials, there will be two tutorials. Of course, this um, in the afternoon there will be on on conceptual elements of basically backtesting financial markets, you know, for, you know, fiat currencies, stock market, cryptocurrencies, technical analysis, and maybe it's by me or maybe by Jacques, another person. And then uh, tomorrow there will be um, one basically technical live coding by Azaria on backtesting frameworks and then on design of databases by Nardos. And then on Wednesday, we will probably have one or two again, but Kafka source and sync connect this by EDDL, but we might add a little bit of like how you connect more systems just than one system. But for example, in this case, you know, how do you synchronize uh, airflow with that one with this so i think uh, then in the afternoon there might be one on uh, lambda basically deploying your front end um, and back end in the lambda which is serverless uh, computing and yeah and then we will add probably more references more tutorials as needed if there are uh, some requests but yeah, and the submissions as usual, so nothing has changed. Reference, it's there. We might add more, but I think it, it's a good start. Okay. So questions? Mohamed? Yes, I, I have no question because uh, the document is very clear and you uh, you specified all the requirements. So um, I have, you could say, a suggestion but yeah. I don't think it's a one. So basically, um, when 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 uh, we we are, we are trying to submit our final uh, submission, we have uh, a one day full of uh, let's say uh, without any uh, sessions or stand up or anything uh, that we could focus all of our work on it. So if we could have that that same day before the interim submission or not the whole day uh, we have no sessions but part of the day or the sessions is uh, minimal uh, yes minimal uh, so that we could focus on uh, submitting the interim report and the interim github submission yep I, I think that's a good suggestion I think we will try to accommodate that um it's yeah maybe just let's do that and then there will be only one tutorial then not the second tutorial and so you will have at least the whole afternoon and then on you know we move everything yeah we try to keep at least the minimum also we will synchronize with an n-technical as well to reduce the number of meetings there so if everest or you know, any of the community team is there, maybe let's just brainstorm on that, how to reduce the number of any, basically distractions or any other commitments on Wednesday so that people focus on that. That's a good one. Okay, last name. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I have a few questions, especially on task one. Uh, uh, on the data part, uh, there are a lot of data, for example, like we have, which one should we choose? Like there are type of cryptos, like Bitcoin, Tesla, 
uh, I mean, like they are on Yahoo Finance. There are a lot of yeah. So this, yeah, this one is for your experimentation that you are on finance, but the Binance one, you can just get like, you know, you can focus for now on one and a few coins, just basically Ethereum um, and uh, Bitcoin and maybe Solana. You know, I mean, usually you shouldn't, you have to know that you will work on all of the coins ultimately. So because it's basically if, if you think of it as a column it's basically a column you know one coin is one column so ultimately you would be working providing backtesting on all coins it doesn't you, you should just build your code in such a way that uh, a coin is just some you know let's say uh, variable it's called you know what's your coin name and then it will just go and fetch that data. So, and you focus only on on cryptos. That means not Tesla, whatever, for now. So that means you only just calculate coin, but as much as possible, don't really hard code any coin by name. Use just some one common name variable called coin, and then just use that one throughout. Because you really don't want to hard code any coin. It's just time series data, right? And the only difference is that that time series is it's bundled in an hour, in a minute, or in a day. So the aggregation. So usually when you say a candle, it means a candle is basically like in, in a box plot, more or less, that has, you know, the beginning the end so the opening price of that the closing price of the candle and then the basically just the maximum and the minimum and then you have also something so that's what's how a coin is specified or how a candle is specified a candle is a row and then with that row you have of course basically means like in different tables each table can correspond to the different coins you support for now you can do it with one coin it's fine but don't pre-specify exactly you know, you know, make it think about coin to be one, but with variables. And then if the coin changes, whether it's, you know, Ethereum or uh, Bitcoin, whatever, you shouldn't, you shouldn't at all. Sometimes you also have to know that you will have interactions because Bitcoin sometimes leads. So you might want to interact, correlate. So think of it like that. Okay. Okay, so for example, let's say if we are about to implement for three coins, we have to store the data, all, all the data is there, right? Yeah. You need to have yeah. the data. Exactly, yeah. Either you fetch it from the back end or, or something, yeah, but that's the case. Okay, uh, my second question. Uh, in There is a bullet created dynamic uh, JSON or uh, simple INA file that automates the runoff, but yeah. practiced by taking in parameters so we have to store all the parameters in the INI file and adjacent exactly because a, what, that's what we call scene a scene is basically that defines the necessary parameters that specify a backtest you know it has coin start and end date you know uh, where to say you know whatever whatever the, the type of coin that you're running and all that you store it as a JSON. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Great. I, I have to run now, but I think hopefully that's clear. Again, we will have on Wednesday, just uh, in one of the, maybe the tutorial, just another just check up session for more questions. People don't understand, but hopefully that's clear. And happy computing. And I think this is going to be a very interesting, again, experimental uh, new challenge. So, yeah, let's try our best. Cheers, guys. Bye.